Hey, if you're new here, my name is Jacob. I'm an ex-lead software engineer, now building my own apps and this YouTube channel. Before starting my deep work session this morning, I made sure to go for a quick walk outside just to get some fresh air and stretch my legs. Now, if you're interested in the technical side of what I get done this morning, I'll be going over that very shortly, so be sure to stay tuned. Now, very quickly, if you're interested in learning more about what I'm doing from a business point of view, be sure to join my free newsletter. You'll find the link to it in the description of this video. I set my timer, put on my lo-fi beats and got to work. Okay, so I've been working on Interlude this morning, as I said, let's get into some of the nitty gritty technical detail of what I've figured out this morning um, and then that, what that kind of means for just overall the next couple of days and weeks of what I'll be working on. So what I've learned today and what I've been building. So as I mentioned in my last video um, or the last episode of this series, I've been looking at trying to extract the company employee number or the number of employees the company has from the company documents and it works which is really great but it only works on the local machine it doesn't work in production because we are downloading all of the files onto the front end um, which you can see here and then essentially converting them into jpegs and OCR in them and it just it goes over the the kind of the storage capacity of our Heroku instance. So I am figuring out a way and researching a way to kind of do it in production and at scale, because it's really important, you know, as I mentioned again in my last video, but if you're new here, like quickly explain, Interlu is a product that lets you search, save, search, save and manage companies, UK companies quickly and easily. Um, this is the first version of the product. It's pretty basic. Let's search for a company. You can see, get a company information overview maybe the data will load in maybe it won't i don't know if, what version or branch i'm on but you can see here now i'm just downloading files onto the local machine which is okay for local and it kind of got the tests working and we're getting the employee count here but again it won't work in production so that's what i've been looking at today how do i get this working in production okay so please bear with me i've got a quick plug for my four new digital products which you can find on my website um, and also they'll all be linked in the description. I think there's something for everyone here from my YouTube channel. And um, if there isn't, if there's something you think I'm missing or something you think I could offer, which I haven't got on here, please let me know in the description or in the comments, sorry. Uh, I'd love to know what you think I can provide value for, you know, what I can do for you. So the first one is a software developer CV template. You know, I reviewed hundreds of CVs while hiring for junior software engineer jobs in the past. And I've just found, and it's not necessarily the perfect formula, but a winning formula, which has worked for me getting interviews at top UK startups, but also just essentially lays the foundation for what a good CV should look like. Um, you'd be amazed at the kind of the, I don't want to say rubbish, but the just kind of below par, just the below par CVs that I've read. Um, and just having a clean structure will do you so much good, um, especially in the, in the format which I lay out here for you. Uh, moving forward. Now, I get loads of comments all the time on my videos saying, you know, should I become a software engineer? How do I become a software engineer or developer? This this product kind of just provides my own kind of journey through it and all the courses that I've done and what I would recommend today if you wanted to become a software developer in 2024. And finally, I've got these two templates. One is for a portfolio if you're a software engineer. So if you're thinking about upgrading your portfolio or your personal website, 
I'd recommend this template for you. It's gonna be super clean, highly customizable, and you'll also get a one hour course of me kind of work walking you through how it all works and how to customize it the best way and also how to deploy it um, if you haven't done that before. And then the same for the SaaS landing page template. I think I've seen so many odd and different SaaS landing pages in the past. I think having a basic standard template is always a good start and you don't have to waste time thinking about how that's gonna look. You can just plug and play and get started so you can focus on what's more important, getting customers and building product. So those are my four quick um, plugs. Apologize, thank you for bearing with me. Now we'll get back to, to the video. It's pretty simple. You can't, I needed to not host my documents or kind of bring the documents down to local machine. I need to do it elsewhere. Um, the first instance uh, I looked at was just AWS and that's what I've tried this morning and it looks to be working quite well. So it all kind of comes back to actually a bit more of the core fun functionality of uh, Interlu itself with how we handle documents. So right now when we call get filings, I've now changed it to where we download the file onto local machine and then upload it to um, our, an S3 bucket and then save the file key in a new file uh, like on the database basically and that will then be pushed to the company where we can save it here so then we have a list of files on our database for each company and then also save the files on S3 so we are essentially building up our own database of company documents so that's really great but then what that also then allows us to do is when we then call the get employee account AWS for now we all we need to do is pass the document and then for AWS Textract clients or to kind of get the AWS OCR tool working, all you simply need to do is pass with the bucket name and then the document file key. And then once you, I know I don't mean to me like advertising AWS, but this does, it is pretty handy. So what I then do is pass the bucket name file key uh, and then a few other bits about client request token. And it re basically returns a job ID which you can see here, this is just an example response, well, the response I got earlier. Uh, and then from there, you'll save that job ID maybe to the file itself, uh, and then at a later date, or set up a SNS kind of simple notification service tool where it will alert a listener, and then we will just go back to that file, check the job ID is still kind of in progress, and then we know it's done. And then from there, we can return, um, which I'll show you now, it returns this response here. So we get these these blocks of data, um, which is a bit more complicated than how I was doing it before, but it is basically the OCR output from that document. So then what we would then do is save all of those blocks of data to um, MongoDB, our database, on the file. So then we're, we are then essentially creating a database of company house documents and then also having their OCR data next to them in the same database. So for at a later date, we can probably do a bit more there. But what's also really cool, AWS provide not only just basic OCR tooling, you can also just query it. So if I want to just add in a query, please return the number of employees from this document, it would try and have a go at that. So it's kind of doing everything my initial uh, get employee count function was doing, um, but I'm still, I don't think I'm gonna go to that much detail. Instead, I'm just going to, yeah, I've gone into the detail here, but kind of get that document, get the data, go through every single line, and then from the lines decide, you know, does it include the employee keyword? And if it does, then pass it to OpenAI to then extract the, the OpenAI API to then extract the number of employees. So that's what I've been working on today. Again, this is not working. If I show you, you know, this is like literally the code. This is the code I've been writing this morning and it is a bit all over the place. But I think this kind of touches on another point which I wanted to mention in this video is software engineering and kind of software development in general on the YouTube space, I think is sometimes not always fairly accurate of what it's actually like in real life. So this is me spending about four hours figuring this all out. And you know, if you were to watch a tutorial, it'd be 20 minutes of someone showing you exactly how to do it. And I think not having all, like if I were to describe what software engineering or just kind of what the job is, it's having a problem, trying to find solution, trying to find a solution to that problem. Uh, if you go into that at a deeper level, it looks like, let me try this, that doesn't work. Let me try this, it doesn't work. Let me try this, it doesn't work. Let me try this, research a bit more, ah, it works. And that's what actually software engineering is. So hopefully you're seeing a bit more of 
what it actually looks like in this video in a day to day. I mean, literally just reading documentation, Googling it, figuring out what to do. And then I put together a simple plan in my notion, which I can share here. So this is, this is the plan, pretty simple. So obviously set up the text track to start the process, say the job ID to the document, maybe list the job ID on the company profile. So we now, we know it's processing, obviously great. Well done, Jake. No, it's processing and then return a UI to the front end, which is quite nice. And then, so set up SNS listener process to handle responses. So we can save all of the block data to the file, check in line, if any include the employee. Yeah, you, basically what I've just said. And then we sync up both routes for five year and one year. So they work effectively and, and yeah, efficiently and not the same. So right now I have two routes going, um, one for one that just wants to check the basic employee number here and another route for loan date the five years. That's a bit stupid. So instead it's just gonna be one call which will return an array of objects from like a year and employee count. And because they will happen asynchronously, they might only have a few years at, at some point. So if you can imagine someone calls this, we start the process. It could be that 2023 gets done first and 2022, but 2021, 2020 aren't done yet. So if they were to then just kind of go overview and come back, it would then only show those three years while the other two are still processing. So we can kind of get some type of just yeah working version out quite quickly. So I hope that makes sense. So we'll go through, yeah, and that's, that's pretty much the plan which I'll be implementing soon. So now I just do want to say again, if you have any feedback or thoughts about marketing the product or just about the product in general, about its features, please do let me know uh, in the comments below. And also my email is always open, info at jacobsargent.co.uk if you want, you know, if you want to share some specific thoughts um, like I know people have in the past. So yeah, just wanted to put that out there. Yeah. So, I've, so I've finished my deep work for the day. So now um, for the rest of the day, I'm going to be just going to grabbing some lunch and then doing some marketing. Now I do really struggle stopping to stop doing, to stop my technical tasks or kind of jobs for the day to then do marketing because I just don't like doing it very much. Um, I'm trying to be better, but I do struggle at it. Um, so yeah, I wanted to crack on with some marketing, mainly writing my newsletter. So if you haven't joined that, make sure you do the comment. Uh, the link will be in the description below um, where I'm just going to be going over mainly more from a business perspective and what's kind of happened over the last couple of months. So if you're interested in learning, make sure you check the description below. Yeah, and I think that pretty much will conclude my day. Um, I'm going to watch a Chelsea game later, so hopefully we'll win. Um, but yeah. I suppose we'll see. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe. And I hope to see you on my next video.